Okay, um, so today we are going to discuss on operation strategy in a global environment. Okay, this is the second chapter, second um, chapter in this um, what we call operation management course. And um, okay, the book actually gave Boeing, Boeing as a, a company which is actually uh, having. Um, clear strategies and mission on how to actually, you know, get countries or airlines to buy their aeroplanes. Okay. So we have to look at as well as how they produce their aeroplane. Okay. We look at the, uh, it is actually a global view of operations. Eh? And you will, we look at example of Boeing, not, not only Boeing, there are other companies which actually, you know, how they strategize to produce their to design their product, to develop their product, and to produce it and to get it to the market. Okay, and obviously, you know, they'll have mission and strategy. So the other, these are the topics we are going to actually uh, cover in this chapter. Uh, so developing mission and strategies that's related to strategic uh, planning and strategic management, achieving competitive advantage through operations. Remember, we are trying to actually. Uh, become excellent in operations. Okay, so you need to manage operation or production management eh, for that matter. Same eh, production management, operations management. And what are the issues in operation strategy? Uh, we're going to look uh, into that and a little bit on strategy development implementation. Maybe uh, you have already taken some strategic planning uh, subjects, courses. Have any of you taken strategic planning uh, subjects before? Strategic planning. Uh, uh, it's okay. Have you taken before strategic planning or strategic management? No. Have you taken some strategic planning subjects? Yeah, I have two class. Uh, okay. Just, uh... okay. So you you will that will help you. Okay, but our focus is operations. Eh? A little different. Uh, strategic planning, core competencies, and outsourcing, assessing of operations, uh, uh, and global operation strategy options. What are the options that is available? Right, by the end of this chapter, you should be able to define mission and strategy, particularly with regards to operations or production management. Okay, production management. Identify and uh, explain three strategic approaches to competitive advantage. And understand the your significant key success factors, your KSF, okay, key success factors, and core competencies of, of companies, of organizations when they actually try to compete um, on a global basis, particularly. Okay. But of course, there are companies who are only operating on uh, um, regional or even local. Okay. That, that's uh, uh, depending on the strategy that company uses. Uh, if we have time, I'll, I'll cover this, use factor rating to evaluate both country and provider of sources, and then identify, explain four global operation strategy options. Now, Boeing's uh, global supply chain strategy, you know, they, Boeing, Boeing is a big company, okay, they produce aeroplanes, but of course during this pandemic, uh, no one is actually buying aeroplanes, okay, today. Your, this uh, COVID, nah, nobody is flying. Not nobody is flying. The flying airlines is airline industry is uh, slowing, is disrupted basically. But but uh, you know when you talk about uh, Boeing, so they have international suppliers of their components. Eh? So for example, uh, France passenger doors. Okay, this company or whatever, however you pronounce it, let la or whatever, or does salt, they produce this the design and PLM software, electric brakes. So various countries design and produce the component, the part, before they are assembled in uh, in uh, US, okay? Uh, right, interior lighting, okay. Japan, Tore Industries, produces carbon fiber for wing and tail units or even the center wing box. We don't have to worry about this component, but those are, you know, 
parts that is required in order to produce the the uh, the whole aircraft okay uh, you, you can go into um, toyota also toyota source out component from many parts of the world from china or from you know when we assemble cars in uh, malaysia by toyota they also have some uh, source part from thailand suppliers okay so it is actually a global supply chain right and uh, why why they do go global why they do in japan why they do in italy probably there are some uh, factors which actually influence and also determine this okay and and all this okay so there are you know various uh, suppliers all over the world producing different components right so the the uh, the, the strategy for Boeing, they have a global strategy in terms of sales as well as supply chain. So Boeing, of course, sales is all the world, and uh, what they they they, they, they source the comp component from 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 anywhere. Okay, uh, Sony used to be a very uh, known company, but not 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 much uh, today. Eh? Still, they 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 also. Uh, they produce electrical goods, they produce uh, what you call um, televisions, okay, and so on. And so they purchase components from suppliers in all in Thailand and Malaysia and around the world. There is a used to be a assembly plant in Malaysia. Benetton is also you know another global company which produces um, clothing, okay, fashion wear, moves inventory to stores around the world faster than its competition competitors they build flexibility into design production and distribution okay uh, another company can you name a company that actually has this uh, you know uh, global uh, uh, what do you call global strategy in terms of uh, supply chain can you can you give me one example, Mino uh, or Shota? Can you give me one example of a company which actually, other than these three? Anyone? Walmart, supermarket. Uh, yes, good example, Walmart. But there is no Walmart in Malaysia. <laughs> is there Walmart in Japan? Little bit. Little bit, okay. Yeah. Not so famous. It's US and probably North America, South America. Okay, I'm not, uh, I used to be, I studied in the US, but at that time, you know, it's very small, one month. Okay, good example. Any any other? Have you heard of Dell? Dell computer? I. Okay. You can give an example. iPhone, Apple, you know, all these... Um, uh, car companies, BMW, Toyota, and so on. Okay, car, car, car automotive company industry, uh, even uh, you know, food, food industry. So anyway, you know the the, the uh, companies that go global have uh, have must uh, have done very well in terms of operations. Okay, Volvo considered a Swedish company. Recently purchased uh, by Chinese company Gili. You know Volvo is owned by Gili. Do you know? Volvo is owned by Gili, a Chinese company, and also Proton. Proton is owned by Gili, and that's why you see Gili. You know they have uh, access to uh, advanced technologies because when you buy that company for example you buy Volvo you are buying the technology as well you are not just buying the assembly plant you are just you are buying the engineers you are buying the you know the, the design capabilities that's why you see Volvo S40 Geely you know in Malaysia they have X70 it's very very similar to Volvo design okay all the sport utility vehicle vehicle the you know SUVs so the current S40 is assembled in Belgium, South Africa, Malaysia, and China on a platform shared with the Mazda 3 built in Japan. Okay. So Mazda also used to have uh, 
like in the connection with Volvo. Haya, Haya is a Chinese company and uh, producing uh, electrical goods today. They have television, they have air conditioner. Right, Chen? Okay, Maska, they know. What does Haya produce today? Mm. No, it's a Chinese company. <laughs> you not heard of it? Higher, higher. Hmm? I had the washing machine. Washing machine, yes. Yeah, machine. I had. I had. Yeah. Oh, you've heard of uh, higher? Yes. Sorry, okay. I can't hear. Oh, you cannot hear. Is my sound uh, losing? Is the sound losing? Can you hear clearly? Yes, I can hear clearly. Okay, so if uh, some, most of you can hear. Anyone who cannot clear, cannot clear, hear me clearly, raise your hands. Just a while ago, is it? Okay. Because the internet is a problem. I'm in Malaysia, you are in Japan. Okay. Uh, anyway, hope you. The English word is hope you bear with me. Bear, bear with me. Okay. Right. And of course, there is a growth of world trade in terms of. No, many merchandises, many products, so there is a uh, increase. But 2020, 2021, probably there is a drop because of the COVID pandemic that is happening all over the world. So world trade probably you know, have uh, reduced. Uh. So why do companies go global? Why do companies operationalize? Uh, when they go operation, they actually uh, go global. Because they want to improve the supply chain, they want to be near to the suppliers, especially you know if products are very heavy, they want to reduce costs. Uh, American companies they go to Vietnam, they go to China, but I heard China no more as no more cheap today. It's, going, it's expensive already in China, so labor is no more cheap in Malaysia, uh, in China. Yeah, probably taxes or tariff tariff uh, you impose on. Uh, you know raw materials, imported goods. So you want to the you know, companies why they do why they they go global is they want to reduce costs or they want to improve operations. And if you go global, you can understand market better, right? And um, so these are the sum of things. Okay, the detailed explanation is you want to improve the supply chain. That means you locate facilities closer to the unique resources. For example, auto design. Automotive design are very near to, you know, uh, California or Europe, uh, Europe. Why are many athletic shoe production located to China? Uh, because uh, you know all the competitors, the Nike, the Adidas, the uh, the Reebok, <laughs> whatever. Okay, all are in China. Okay, uh, even uh, handphones, handphones, uh, iPhones are produced in China. Or even uh, you know, uh, I don't know about Samsung. Samsung is it produced in China? Do you know? I'm not sure. Okay, but anyway, so you have uh, the uh, the similar uh, products because that would going to reduce the cost, especially you know suppliers very near to the uh, main manufacturer. In in Japan, there is Toyota City. Toyota Shi. So all the suppliers are near uh, Nagoya. Right? Nagoya is, uh, you know, the, the very, very near and they produce uh, to Toyota. Perfume manufacturing in France is also, so they improve the supply chain. Reducing costs. Foreign location with lower wage can lower direct and indirect costs. So you're talking about lower wages. That's why in the US, in Mexico, just beside the border, okay, you can use Mexican workers 
cheaper than American workers. So they source and they, you know, it is in NAFTA, North American Free Area. Similar to Malaysia, a lot of companies actually, when Malaysia's uh, labor cost increases, you know, companies, uh, Japanese companies run away and uh, you know, set up in Vietnam. Vietnam is still cheap. Do you know Vietnam? Okay, so Vietnam is still cheaper than in Malaysia. So they moved their factories. They move out their factories to Vietnam, okay, or even to Thailand. Um, so trade agreements can also lower trade tariffs. I mean, that's why there is regional trades, like in in uh, ASEAN. Okay, there is ASEAN free trade area. So countries in ASEAN actually enjoy lower tariff for components or parts that is produced or material being produced within the region, okay, within the, and recently, you know, you talk about um, APEC, if I'm not mistaken, okay, or, or AFTA, AFTA is ASEAN, ASEAN free sector. Anyway, EU, European Union, all trying to protect their own regional uh, trips, eh? so that is uh, happening, reducing costs, so, Improving operations, that is also the objective of many companies that try to go global. Uh, when you go international, you can actually improve your response time and customer service because you start learning the new way of doing business. Okay, for example, if a company in Malaysia were to do business in Japan, they would know that you know quality is very important inventory is very important, customer satisfaction is important, so they need to actually make sure they produce products that meets customer requirements, okay? And uh, you can build that into your design of the product. That means if you understand more cultures and more uh, requirements, then you can actually uh, produce a global product. A product a global product that meets you know different uh, uh, conditions, re re different uh, requirements. Uh, like for example, Scandinavian companies they are very um, they they focus a lot on ergonomics. Products must have uh, ergonomical. Ergonomics is actually uh, suitable and suitable for or easy use, easy use for human, okay, for human beings. We have a topic on ergonomics. So ergonomically design toothbrush, ergonomically design, you know, uh, workstations, okay. So that is, um, you can improve operation by understanding differences between how business is handled in other countries. So you incorporate that into your system. Okay, so you don't, you are, you are not stuck with your own way of doing things. You can understand markets because when you interact with foreign customers or suppliers, you lead to competition and you lead to new opportunities, right? So cell phone design moved from Europe to Japan uh, in the, uh, you know, stage, but now probably, you know, Korean as well as Korean, uh, Korean and also Chinese probably, Chinese uh, cell phone 5G in the future, okay. Right, so you understand, so we need to, uh, when we go global, we will have the opportunity to actually um, understand your, the, the culture, you know, different culture have different way of doing, of using their products, okay, or have different uh, uh, product applications. And you can extend your product life cycle because some products which are advanced in one country may not be as advanced in, for example, in Africa or in Sudan, for example, or in Middle East. Okay, so you can still you sell your low technology products to low technology countries. Okay, so that is what's happening in the world today. Okay, so advanced countries have the advanced technologies. Anyway, 
improving products. So that's what I mentioned just now. You go global, you're open to free flow of ideas and different people and different way of thinking. Uh, and you have to uh, appreciate, you can appreciate that. So improve products. Uh. Toyota and BMW manage joint research and development. So there is a European design car. There is a Japanese. And the Japanese are very reliable and you know very high quality. Uh, whereas the Germans are very high performance, very fast, very very tough. Okay. Uh, so this will reduce the risk, and you use state of the art design, and you can lower cost. Samsung and Bosch jointly produce batteries, and of course today we talk about electric vehicles. So there will be more joint, you know, uh, joint collaboration between companies on developing efficient electric car batteries because that is the most difficult thing in electric car. How to get maximum use of battery? Okay, or oh, the battery can drive very very fast or not very fast, very far. And when you go global, you you imagine. Eh? You know, if you don't uh, go out of uh, China, for example, you lay, you were from China, then you go to Japan. Correct. So you learn new way of thinking and ideas because you've seen a different world. If you still stay in China, probably your thinking is different. Okay. And you can attract and retain global talent because when you go global, for example, Shell. You know, Shell produces oil, right? Shell, petrol company, Shell. So they have, they, they source out global talents. They source global talents, global workers, global managers. Someone from Malaysia can become a manager in, uh, for example, in India or in uh, Netherlands, general manager, you know, and so on. So you offer better employment opportunities. <coughs> and better growth opportunities, employment and also growth opportunities uh, for, for human resource, okay? And you re can relocate unneeded personnel to more prosperous location. So companies that go global, when they are headquarters, they have too many people, too many. For example, Toyota have many people in uh, Nagoya, for example, and they are already experienced, 50 years old, almost retire, so send them to new plants, new factories in uh, Africa or in Malaysia, for example. Understand? So that is, you can attract and retain global talent. Eh? Of course, uh, when you go global, the uh, companies must understand that cultures are different. Cultures can be quite different. But we are the same human being. Okay, don't worry. Human being are the same. We have two eyes. We have one nose. We have, uh, you know, there is no human being which have uh, five eyes. Ah, uh, yeah. Is there a human being with five eyes? No. You understand? Ningen wa two eyes only. Okay, but culture can be different. Culture is because of our way of bringing up education, your parents, and also religion, okay, religious uh, background. Eh? Attitudes can be quite different. Attitudes can be quite different towards, you know, punctuality? Punctuality, on time. Punctuality means on time. In Japan, very punctual. Train, nine o'clock, nine o'clock you will arrive. But in Malaysia, train nine o'clock, maybe arrive, maybe not arrive. Okay. <laughs> so that is sorry wa gibun no kuni no wari koto oshiete. But that is fact, that is fact, okay. Uh, and then uh, lunch time, lunch breaks, environment. So this must be understood when we go global or you operate on international basis or you operate in even in different parts of the country for example i know china is very big or japan is also very big the culture in north and south probably is different 
Okay, so that must be included when we manage operations. Okay, environment, intellectual property. In China, you know, uh, IKEA cannot, uh, you know, sue local who copy their products. IKEA, or even last uh, 20 years ago, you know, uh, Honda cars are being copied. Okay, intellectual property. But that's the process, okay? Japan also went through that process of initially copying. Uh, you know, co copy, copying, copy. But that is intellectual property. So is there a law that protect IP? There is a law in, uh, in uh, what we call, in our country. So that, that's, that's also a problem for you know, big, big companies to invest or to do business on a global basis. Uh, thievery, theft, stealing, you know, uh, stealing goods, stealing products, uh, stealing bribery, bribe, bribes, you know, bribes, giving uh, money to enforcement officer to run away from being uh, summoned. Police, do you bribe the police to run away from your uh, if you break law, you know, you, you found guilty, not guilty, you haven't found guilty, you're caught stealing or you are caught red light, driving red light, police catch you, give you summon, okay? Or even doing business, okay, uh, setting up companies, is, is that bribery. And the issue of child labor, okay, child labor is, it is, it is, well, we follow a lot of, uh, well, what's your opinion? You know, we follow American, uh, so-called American standards. Do you, do you agree we follow American standards or Western for that matter? Because uh, Western say child labor is not allowed. There are companies who do business and when they find uh, child labor, they stop the business. What's your opinion? Child labor or anything Western, Western standards? Yeah, who? Any opinion? It's okay. It's a, you know, it's a free country. Don't worry. It's a free country. You can talk anything that you want. What's your opinion on child labor? Wang? Uh, I'm agree with uh, Western standard. Oh, you agree with American yeah. standard? Okay, that means uh, you do not allow child labor. Okay. Yeah. I think some areas that the children have to live by them that by themselves by themselves. So child labor is acceptable to me. Yeah, in some rural places, you know, rural village you because child labor there's no um i mean in our but, culture it's it's okay child can work <laughs> what's wrong with child actually can work but you can't force the for you can uh, force the child force yeah you can force okay, this is uh, this is but they can walk if they want if so, they want to i think so the, the the they should we should put the first first word force not forced only, not only child, but forced labor. Not only child, but forced labor is, because forced labor is becoming slave. You know slave? So we are talking about forced labor. Even in America, probably, there are forced labor. Okay, so... Because, yeah, because children is, is a group which is easy to... Forced, so yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, children are uh, easier to be forced, um, but when you allow, children uh, should be allowed to, you know, understand how life is. But anyway, this uh, we can continue discussion. Okay, so companies that want to uh, operate on a global basis must understand the national literacy rate, uh, the rate of innovation, okay, the rate of technology change, 
right? Uh, or even the availability of good education system, okay, the availability of skilled labors and so on. Eh? So all these are, uh, but of course today you are, you are talking about phone system, you're talking about whether you have uh, 5G or not, eh? no, not. No more, this is, uh, so Africa is very lucky because they did not have to uh, install the um, hardware for phone system. <laughs> for old, old system, so they go for uh, advanced. Eh? So, so that's a difficulty. Eh? How fast should we develop uh, in order to you know, wait for technology? Eh? Political stability, yes, that's why uh, it is important. Eh? Any country, variation, language, and so on. There are many factors. Eh? Companies want to consider this. So try to match product and parent company. So what? Uh, today we are do not just now. Gili is owned by uh, Volvo is owned by Gili. So basically, it is actually uh, no more Volvo, right? Okay. Okay. Who owns? Who do you think owns uh, Jaguar Auto? Of course, when you click the slide, you can see the answer. But don't click the slide first. Okay. So who owns Jaguar Auto? Who 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 owns Is it is it uh, uh, in, in is Tata? Okay. Who owns Godiva chocolate? Okay. Who yes, owns MGM yes. movies? Sony what? I think Sony MGM movies. MGM to, used to be American company. Do you know MGM movies? It's uh, you know uh, Hollywood. So these different products initially, you know, uh, developed and owned by one country, for example, Proton. If I put here Proton, uh, Proton, Proton cars. So the company used to be, used to be Proton. Used to be Proton. Proton is a or Proton Malaysia, but no more. It is now Gili China. Okay, so if you see this, this is what is happening. Right? You, you, on a global basis, we we can. It's no more going to be um, their own country develop that. It is owned by their co own company. It's no more. It's, it's global. Everything is global today. Alpo Seafood, Nestle, Lamborghini, Volkswagen. <laughs> Lamborghini, uh, Firestone tire, uh, Bridgestone, okay, Japanese. So you can see this, uh, Godiva, Campbell Soap. That is in terms of companies. We can try to, you know, go and uh, identify which product to which country. For example, Braun, okay, Braun household appliances. <coughs> so which country? <laughs> Okay, Firestone just now, it's uh, probably Japan. Anyone can just shout out, you just tell me which one, which to which one, all of them. You just, uh, you, you tell me. Godiva. Godiva, Godiva chocolate is just now is Switzerland. Campbell. Huh? Switzerland. Switzerland, okay. Godiva is Switzerland. Okay. Hegendas? Hagen Dash making ice cream, famous Hagen Dash. Germany. Germany, okay. Jaguar? Jaguar just now, it's uh, India. India, Tata, India. Tata, eh? Tata, India. MGM movies is Japan, probably. Lamborghini, uh, Lamborghini, Germany, Germany, nah. Germany. Volkswagen. Alpo Seafood, Pet Foods. UK ka, makarana. Okay, so, uh, no, El Posifo is Switzerland. So, Godiva is United States. Yeah, Godiva is uh, United States. Hagen Dash is also United States. In uh, US, uh, US, uh, US. Okay, so you can see that, you know, uh, 
because we are now working or living in a globalized world country owning the uh, country owning the companies may not be the original country that actually developed the uh, company products so, understand eh? so there is a there is a you know a lot of um, there's a lot of uh, differences eh? Then Great Britain is no more great, okay? You can remove great, okay? It's only Britain. There's no more Great Britain. <laughs> no. You understand my joke, okay? There is no more Great Britain, okay? People will sue me. Anyway, <coughs> so that's the first thing, okay? Um, that companies actually, when they go uh, operational, uh, in international, they need to have, uh, they need to have, reasons and so they need to understand why and in in operation strategy uh, we are it's very, very, very important to actually develop mission and strategy so mission statements will tell an organization where it is going where it is going and strategy will tell the organization how so where it is going uh, mission uh, there is another one which is actually vision vision is more like what you want to become or what you want to be i want to be the number one manufacturer of this product of course you have that 20 year timeline or 10 year timeline 10 years so vision eh? so you you all have vision who you have vision to become you know a general manager for <laughs> A large multinational company so that's my vision okay so your mission now today is to study okay? that's your mission your mission is you know so companies also have that they have a mission and strategy and eh? strategy and how to get there so mission is where the, com the company is uh, going it is the purpose for being purpose for being not yet be not be but purpose what is your purpose for example, the mission of uh, universities is actually to provide education. The mission of my life is actually to teach and pass knowledge to as many people as possible so that you have a better understanding of the world. Okay, operation management is just one thing, but philosophy of doing business, philosophy of life. Do you think that you know the way that you work depends on your, your personality? I hope. You, the way that you live depends on your own principles. Everyone has principles. Can you tell me what is one principle that you have? That you may have, that you believe in? Uh, Yang, what one principle that you have purpose? Okay, what's your, what's your principle? Uh, my principle is... Um... Work hard. <laughs> To be honest. <laughs> to be honest. Very good. I like that. Okay. To be okay. honest. Yes. Very good. Oh, you must have, you know, you know, to help mankind. <laughs> uh -huh. yes. My principle is um, free to say. Again? Uh, my principle is um, whatever I, I, I can say to others ah you have uh, you you know that's in english is called you you know you want to you want to speak the truth do you mm, yeah. ah, speak the truth so even it is hard so i find that japanese don't have that characteristic <laughs> sorry <laughs> okay okay <laughs> So Japanese very very shy, very in introvert. You need to be extrovert a bit. You need to open up. Okay, you need to even students. You need to you know. For example, you know I I would like I like students who want to ask questions. I would I would like to see you know at the end of the semester, you be you know trying to wanting to learn more and just. Ask difficult questions to me, no problem. 
You can ask me about religious question also. Religion, no problem. I will answer anything, any question. Speak the truth, eh? Okay, you must speak the truth. Good. Okay. So organization, same. Same. University, provide education. Uh, Wolfsbacon, product, provide quality cars. And uh, that's why we say, what do we contribute to society? So you will answer, what do we contribute to society? And it will provide boundaries and focus because when you are in business, you must only produce within your capabilities, okay, and capacity. You cannot be producing or you cannot deliver service. For example, you are hotel service. So you only provide service. We are a small hotel, only like, for example, 50 rooms. You cannot compete with Hilton. You can't say, I'm going to become Hilton. Forget it. You won't become Hilton because your boundary is, you know, a small hotel. But the customers, yes, you can provide maximum customer satisfaction in all your services. That is your belief system. If your company's belief system is, I want to give the best product, even though my boundary and my focus is just, it's a small, you know, uh, hotel chain. So mission, where the company is going. For example, this is an example. The mission of Merck. Merck, if I'm not mistaken, is um, uh, shipping line, if I'm not mistaken. Eh? If I'm not mistaken, okay, we can check that. Uh, to provide society with superior product and services. And uh, product, but, but be careful because sometimes mission statement, if you are too, too much, you know, it's like not telling the truth. <laughs> You're trying to just, uh, you know, you just uh, make it uh, bombastic, bombastic to be. All right, to provide employees with meaningful work and so on. Okay, this is an example. Huh? Or Pepsi Cola. Pepsi Cola. Uh, and everything we do, we strive for honesty, fairness, and integrity. Anyway, these are companies' uh, own mission statements that is developed. Hospitals. This is in US, um, Arnold Palmer Hospital provides state-of-the-art family-centered healthcare, um, right? Focus on restoring the joy of childhood. This is for children, eh? for children, it's a children's hospital. Right, so what are the factors affecting mission? There are so many factors. These are some of them. Your philosophy and values, the company's philosophy. That's why the guiding principle of company is from the the creator of the company. Um, if the company is, uh, of course, it's public owned, then uh, it is serving the public. Eh? But I like companies which are actually owned by, you know, like uh, individuals, entrepreneurs who become, make it big, like Toyota, uh, Sakichi Toyota. They will actually, uh, you know, come up with the philosophy and values of, you can read about that. Eh? Uh, and the values that they want to give you know, their product because when they believe that they can provide the best uh, service or the best food restaurant, you provide, you know, very healthy food. Today we're talking about organic foods, the organic food, healthy foods. Eh? So what's the values eh, that you, the company, uh, hold on to? Of course, uh, profitability is also important for uh, that it will influence the mission, the public image, uh, environment, customers. So these are factors that will actually influence your mission. And at the end of the day, it is what benefits society. Okay, so the company must have uh, that um, all this in mind, basically, eh? all this in in their picture. So in. Uh, Developing a strategy so the organization must actually develop the organizational organization mission. Then, of course, if the company is big, then you can come up with functional missions. For example, operations have the mission, finance, marketing. Okay, so it depends on company, depend on organization uh, whether they they will actually normally they will cascade down. Okay, so operations will have the uh, mission statement aligned with organizational mission. 
must be aligned. Align means similar uh, uh, towards the organization. So for example, the mission of the company is, this is to manufacture and service innovative Boeing and Pogito product worldwide. So the operations mission is to produce product consistent with the company's mission worldwide low cost so the strategy here is low cost so this company we can immediately understand that is actually a low cost manufacturer okay so that's why the operations must be lean must be uh, you know there's a lot of cost saving activities and you don't low cost is uh, low cost countries as well okay and you can break down in, into you know department but this is going to be very very detailed already eh? not, not many companies actually come up with a very detailed uh, light until the until the you know uh, lower level and normally you know we have uh, at the organizational level okay organizational level so what is strategy strategy is uh, the action plan to achieve the mission so you have to come up with strategies and uh, functional areas also have strategies. Normally, strategies exploit opportunities and strength and neutralize threats and weakness. So this is under the SWOT analysis. Have you heard of SWOT analysis before? Kita koto arimaska? SWOT analysis? No. So we have strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. So a company must understand what are their strengths. That means they exploit their strength. That means, for example, we have very creative employees, very young employees. So we must capitalize on that. We must exploit that. And also opportunity means the possibility of, there is opportunity for uh, introducing more robots in pandemic, in COVID. In COVID time, we need more robots, more automatic equipment, more, you know, no, not um, you know, less human uh, so called interaction and more uh, automated interaction. So that's opportunity. Opportunity to move, to, move, uh, to produce more uh, face masks. Face masks is uh, not. Is uh, something which is going to be required in a very long time, eh? okay? And that neutralize threat and avoid weakness. I think that is uh, okay. But anyway, it is trying to find the company strength, and then uh, if the company is weak, they try to overcome or try to solve the weaknesses, opportunities. You capitalize on that, or you 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 try to exploit, and also you ex uh, you you avoid uh, the the threats. Threats, for example, threats from new suppliers, threats from new products, threats from new technology. That is why U.S. is threatened by 5G technology. Threat. So they they have not developed like china's 5g technology that is why they have they block uh, huawei it's simple you know it's uh, uh they, they try to uh, run away from that eh? so companies or countries cannot run away from that there is a threat you need to actually neutralize the threat so what are strategies for quality advantage is uh, normal in any strategies uh, that we talk about uh, it depends on the companies um, whether they want to differentiate their product or services. That means it is better than competitor, better than other similar uh, products, or at least different, different, different from uh, the other product. You cannot be selling same eh? in terms of uh, quality, right? In terms of uniqueness of the product iPhone and, for example, Samsung Note, uh, there, is, uh, there is a pen. iPhone, there is no pen. Hmm. Samsung, there is pen. 
Oh Karimah sudah. iPhone no pen. Okay, of course uh, many many people use uh, iPhone. Well, it's a good phone. I'm not saying it's not a good phone. Okay, uh, especially Japanese, uh, they will go for iPhone. But uh, Samsung has that unique uh, difference. So cost leadership, whether it is cheaper, okay, cost leadership. For example, today, which vaccine is the cheapest in the world today? From your knowledge, from your reading. Anyone? Do you know which vaccine is uh, the cheapest? Which brands or which countries or which companies? Nah, Yule. Stimaska. Shiranai. Chen? I don't know. Mm, that is Stimas. Shiranai? Cheapest is from China. The Sinovac. <laughs> Okay, if I'm not mistaken, Pfizer is the most expensive. Beyond tech, Pfizer beyond tech is the most expensive. So that, that's why you compete on, and uh, it is efficacy. It is still is still working. Eh? Anyway, cost leadership, uh, branded drugs produced in China uh, and not China in India cheaper than the branded drugs. For example, drug for thinning your blood, you know, for blood pressure. So, or even paracetamol or even Panadol, okay. Uh, so they don't have to spend on R&D. They've already got the pattern and also the, you know. So cost leadership, cheaper, huh? so cheaper. Uh, or response, more responsive, okay. Uh, do you compete on response? Huh? Uh, last weekend, my Dell Dell uh, computer was uh, having some problem. It is not able to connect to the internet, Wi-Fi, my computer. Immediately, I call Dell, and of course, they have technical support online, but they cannot solve it. And they go on uh, on site. They send someone to actually repair and replace the um, Bluetooth Wi-Fi uh, card. That's respond very fast. You know, Dell has one of the fastest and also responsive. So uh, if not today, I don't have class with you. No, I have class. I have another computer. Okay. <laughs> so understand response. Okay, response is uh, very crucial. Okay, these are the details on uh, Competing on differentiation. Uh, okay, uniqueness beyond both physical characteristics and services, right? All Disney, they have this experience at differentiation. Anyone, have you been to Tokyo Disneyland? Have you Itakuto Arimaska? Tokyo Disneyland? Itakuto Aru? Yes. Disneyland. Uh, so, Disneyland, same experience. If you go to US, Orlando, okay, Onaji, oh. same experience. Tapun tito chigao ne ano Nihon Nihon Jin na Nihon Jin, not America Jin na ano Tokyo. But the props, the what you call the characters, the um, the Mickey Mouse's, the, same same Onaji na. So that is. What Walt Disney tried to give you know, the customers all over the world? Because I have been to uh, Orlando, Disneyland. I know Los Angeles, uh, yeah, LA, there is uh, one Disneyland. And also I've been to Tokyo, Disneyland. Okay, so, but during 80s, uh, it's different from me. But same experience. Hard Rock Cafe, same dining experience, correct? No, I haven't been to Dino, Hard Rock Cafe. You know, experience, same. Yeah. So they, they, they actually have this customer perception of the impact customer perception of value. Okay. So that's, you know, how global and also how operation, that is operations. Because when you go to this uh, Disneyland, 
how do you ensure that you know the machine is running and then you can get the right of course i know the waiting time is very long <laughs> because so many people <laughs> but not in covid now covid this this close then okay so competing on differentiation even products you buy cars you buy you know different uh, television or whatever um uh, competing on cars southwest airlines or asia do you know asia you know asia A asia do you know so it's a malaysian low-cost carrier but before the COVID, they are the number one in the world. Before COVID, but now COVID, no one is number one. No airline, <laughs> nine. There is no number one airline today. But anyway, they compete on cost. Cheap, okay. The US Secretary allow airport no fuel service. Uh, even in Asia, you have to pay for food and so on. Eh? Walmart is also a small overhead shrinkage and discipline cost. So Walmart is also a low cost, um, not to say cheap. Eh? There's a difference between Yasui and cheap and low cost. Low cost, high quality does not imply low quality. Okay, because lower cost means you are operating at a very efficient uh, way. Okay. And of course, uh, competing on response, uh, reliability in meeting schedule, timeliness, meeting on the time, like Japanese uh, Shinkansen, okay, on time. But of course, uh, not everything in Japan is fast response, okay? <laughs> because, uh, you know, same, only certain things. <coughs> uh, so to, to compete on response, flexibility is important because if you are not flexible then you will not be able to actually match the changes in the you know that is happening in the market okay design innovation and volume so if you look back at you know they're very flexible even dell dell is very flexible you can design a different kind of configuration for your um, product okay um you want to take a five minute break go home no kike shimashou ka hai go home no kike shimashou so these are the uh, operation management uh, contribution to strategy the decision areas and if you look at the strategy, uh, which particular areas of, uh, of operation actually you need to focus or uh, try to be good at, okay? And these are the competitive advantage. Uh, some issues in operation strategy, you have to think whether you're uh, viewing the organization in terms of uh, resources view, uh, resource view uh, in which they, uh, the organization will always think about how to maximize or optimize the resources into financial, into physical resources, into of human resources. Okay, as compared to uh, value chain analysis or even using Fortis Five process model to uh, uh, analyze and uh, to develop your strategy. We have to remember also that actually companies operate in a system with uh, many external factors happening at the same time. Uh. That means there are economic changes, there are, you know, like today there are pandemics. So this will actually affect our strategy and need to re-strategize. Okay, strategies are not uh, there to be, uh, what do you call, it's not fixed and follow blindly. Uh, right. Um, and there, there's constant change happening everywhere in terms of technology, in terms of, um, uh, government rules, policies, and so on. Okay. Right. So, in we can look at company strategy or issues depending uh, based on the product life cycle because the product or products will have life cycle. Okay. That's why when you uh, companies, if they, if they do not innovate and come up with new products, they will be losing and be 
you know, uh, just killing the companies. Nokia used to be a very good handphone manufacturer, but no more Nokia today. No more Nokia. Nokia is okay. So there is uh, there is interruption, growth, maturity, and decline. Uh, uh, what do you call stages in all products? Uh, do you see three, uh, three and a half inch, uh, three, three and a half inch floppy disk anymore? You don't see. Maybe probably when you went to school, it's already uh, a pen drive. Okay. Uh, we used to have very big, big computers, but no more. Uh, even you know, all all products are actually changing, changing very fast, and that's why you need to re-strategize and come up with uh, better strategies. Yeah. So, in the introduction stage, these are the strategies that should be considered. For example, uh, product design and development is critical in the introduction stage because the product is new. You need to understand the problems. You need to resolve the problems. And then, as you grow, reliability issues will increase, or even uh, capacity problem to produce. You cannot meet the demand, so increase more machines, more machines. And then suddenly the product no more going to produce. So you have to come up with a new model, new different products, or you switch. Okay. So, so this is this are continuous. Eh? It's a continuous process of trying to uh, realign and trying to uh, make sure that you are going to be sustaining. Eh? Company must be sustained. Uh, there are companies which are dead today eh? dead, dead companies no more no more known when i was small there is sinclair that's the american brand so even there are british leyland making cars no more of of bmc eh? right we will look in this further that is when we go into product design we have we will have the chance to actually go into this again and this is what i mentioned just now SWOT analysis that means we try to analyze in terms of our external opportunities, threats, and you capitalize. Capitalize means you, you use your strength, use strength. Then uh, try to reduce weakness, okay? Try to reduce threats. Uh, so and then you come up with your strategy, okay? I'm not going to go this detail, okay? Uh, the process from analyzing the environment, doing SWOT analysis, okay, analyze the environment by doing SWOT analysis and then determining your mission and then forming the strategy, such as low price. So we're going to have a low price, low cost strategy for our product. Then you translate that into uh, location which are cheap, layout with um, a lot of manual work rather than machine or even automation or robot. Robot is expensive. So you don't want to buy robots. You want to buy, you can just use human beings to assemble the product. Okay. You start with assembly. You don't uh, design the product first, for example. Eh? Okay. So in strategy development, uh, you need to identify key success factors. What are the key success factors for the organization? For example, you know, one of the strategic decisions relate to layout for example or even quality we need to uh, develop quality system that will actually ensure low cost because high quality means you need to produce it with less rejects less reject means what you, you don't have rejects you don't waste money trying to repair repair is costly so focus on strategy on key success factor quality for example and you need to integrate that with other activities. Quality relates with the machine, relates to the worker. Worker needs to be training on good uh, assembling uh, capability or working capability. And you build and staff the organization. So the operation management manager job is to implement an operation management strategy, provide competitive advantage and increase productivity. Remember last week I said about we discussed about productivity. Anything that the operations uh, try to improve, we have we can measure before and after. If you really there is a change, then you know uh, the productivity will increase, quality will increase, time safe, time safe, money safe. 
Okay, these are the details. Uh, later on, we'll go to the chapters. Eh? There are this, uh, we, we, we'll cover this uh, subsequent. Okay. There is a method of trying to understand uh, what kind of activity that you need to uh, design or to have in order to, for example, your competitive entry is low cost. Your strategy is low cost. So that's why a low cost carrier, low cost airlines, they have limited passenger service as compared to full fledged airlines. Okay. Courteous but limited. Short haul, point to point. Frequent, uh, reliable schedule. Air Asia, when they fly to, for example, Guangdong, the turnaround time is very fast. They will just have 45 minutes or one hour and turn around back to the next destination. Or even they go to KL, Guangdong, Guangdong, KL. KL, Jakarta, Jakarta, KL. Very fast turnaround. They cannot wait, you know, like uh, longer hours. Because, you know, uh, the CEO for Asia and Tony Fernandez said, airline makes money when it is flying. When the airplanes are on the ground, it doesn't make money. So the more time the airplane is on the ground, you don't make money. <laughs> For example, a grab driver, taxi, eh, or even Uber. Uber driver will make money only he drive the car. When he the Uber driver park the car in his house, he don't make money. <laughs> it is making money when he taxi. Okay, so that's uh, that's the the whole idea. Eh? And standardized fleet. Why standardized? Because you don't have to. Uh, you know, bother with understanding or doing maintenance for different, uh, what do you call aircraft. So you don't have to have Airbus. And some company, they have Airbus 3, what, 340, 330 Airbus, and then Boeing. So you need to have you know, pilots for both systems. So you waste money, you standardize. So these are the key things for, you know, a low cost. High aircraft utilization, I mentioned this now, and then lean productive employee. So these are the things that did automated kitchens. Meal, no meals, uh, high number of flights reduces employee idle time. Pilot training require only one type of aircraft. I mentioned this now. You have Boeing 737. That's it. You know, you only simulation training pilot one, you know, one type and reduce maintenance. And also inventory of spare parts. You don't have to keep spare parts for different uh, kind of aircraft. Okay. And uh, high aircraft utilization. Of course, you need to work out with the employees. Twenty minute get turnaround. So these are already designed and built. Can copy. This can copy. Anyone who wants to develop a low cost airline can just take this system and just do it. Eh? Right. Um, so if we compare the strategic decision in terms of product differentiation strategy versus low cost. Product differentiation means it is actually going to come up with different products. This is for drugs company, Pfizer, you know, whatever, Ben or whatever. This is heavy R&D. You need to come up with very unique uh, products, uh, drugs. So quality is major priority, of course. Here is also you meet you must meet minimum requirements of the uh, what they call uh, med medical or health. So different strategies will require different uh, what they call focus, right? Uh, location still located is still where it was founded recently moved. So this is different uh, between these uh, two companies. Eh? So implementing the strategic decisions. Um, will ensure that your, your strategy will be uh, achieved eh, based on the competitive advantage. Or, so this is uh, in terms of layout, human resource. Again, using drug company. One is generic drug. Generic, you know, generic is just cheap drugs. <laughs> Not to say cheap, but general drug. Okay, general medicine versus branded drugs. Okay, branded drugs. 
Okay, there are things, other things in terms of strategy planning, cooperation, out, outsourcing. Outsourcing is actually transferring activities that you initially you you were, you were doing it internal but to external suppliers, which I mentioned early, very early in this uh, in the lecture just now. Boeing, you know, they have uh, suppliers all over the world, and it is actually very important or very uh, crucial for companies. The technological companies okay as it will accelerate the you know the, the progress of the company because of increased technology expertise more reliable and cheaper transportation rapid deployment development and deployment of advancement in telecommunication and computers right you can uh, you can use that of course today uh, products are being developed very fast today today we have uh, we are living in the world in which not 20 years ago, 15 years ago, products takes a lot of time to be developed. Uh, vaccine, one year <laughs> vaccine, but that is also questionable. So you subcontracting, you, you can do contract manufacturing. That's what it is called. Nike, Adidas, that's contract manufacturing in China. iPhone is also contract manufacturing in China. Okay. Uh, you know, Flextronics is a, it's a Singaporean company, if I'm not mistaken. Is there Flextronics in uh, Shenzhen, in China? Do you know? Have you heard of Flextronics? You can Google Flextronics. Google, eh? please Google. So there are, you know, it's a, it's a big uh, electronic, electrical uh, contract manufacturer. They produce, like, for example, um, Printers for hey, Hewlett Packard, for Canon, for you know, all the big uh, printer manufacturers, electronic. So HP don't produce their own their own uh, printers. Yeah. Okay. Now some of the activities that can be outsourced by companies uh, that can reduce their operations costs, uh, legal services, travel services. Or even payroll control, some companies today, they do not have employees trying to, you know, manage uh, payroll. Payroll means payment and also wages, eh? okay? Or even outsource production. <laughs> this is what you call outsource production. The flextronics, outsource surgery. Uh, so it depends on your, I, for, I forgot to mention, okay? It depends on the core competencies that exist in the companies. Okay, core competency. If it is design competency, you know, it is uh, what we call, uh, it should be capitalized, eh? should be capitalized. <coughs> so there is a theory of competitive advantage. I think you're also quite, uh, yeah, you have heard of this, eh? okay? Which is actually if someone can do more productive, or more, um, you know, faster than you, then, you know, you can actually, um, well, the external provider should actually do the work, okay? You you should spend your time and money on things which are, you are good at, which are simple, you know, you ask someone else to do, to do okay? That's the uh, theory of comparative advantage. Right? It comes from uh, even between nations, okay, countries. Low-level manufacturing can be outsourced to other countries. That's why, you know, the uh, this is, countries are competing basically in terms of trying to make sure that they actually have um, the value value added. And purchasing firm focuses on competencies, and it will actually drive outsourcing. Eh? The, the uh, when, when you do that, but the there are risks of outsourcing in terms of Today, today we have seen that outsourcing resulted into the disruption of supplies because of pandemic. So when you outsource, some production line have to be stopped because you cannot have materials that is very, uh, it was stopped by the pandemic. Okay, there's, uh, there's disruption. Today there's, uh, there's disruption. People are, who say there is no disruption, then uh, probably uh, they, they need to actually uh, find out. In terms of advantages, you can have cost savings, okay, uh, get outside expertise, and so on. 
uh, access outside technology that you do not have, you can uh, disadvantage. But this uh, disadvantage is actually increase logistic and inventory cost. Logistic cost is going to be increased. Loss of control in terms of quality, but you can control. It's not that you cannot control. You know, there are garment manufacturers, you know, they, they produce branded shirts, uh, Louis Vuitton or whatever, you know, uh, I Saint Laurent. They send you no, Levi's, <laughs> Levi's. They give the material, they tell you the standard, you just follow the standard. So control of quality is done by obeying everything. So the contract manufacturer follow A to Z, everything. So the, the owner of the technology actually tell, even say, okay, I'm going to give you everything, the machine, set up the line, you just make it, you just provide the labor. Material from the, uh, what do you call, uh, the companies, uh, okay? Even they have inspectors go to the company and say, okay, this product can go, this product cannot go, this product reject. Levi's, <laughs> okay, so not necessary, you cannot, uh, cannot control, you still can control, eh? okay, but there is a possibility. But this is true, eh? potential creation of future competition. What happened is the subcontractor will end up making the same product, either by copying or either having the same, you know, idea, but tweak it a bit, change a little bit, and they have their own similar product. That's the, that's the danger, eh? okay. Uh, negative impact on employees, uh, risk may impact, okay, never mind. This is the risk of outsourcing that for their advantages and disadvantages, okay. You can outsource, you can actually rate outsourcing providers. You can assign, uh, this is called factor rating method, uh, very simple, straightforward, nothing fancy, okay, nothing fancy, eh? it's just, uh, you have uh, three different outsourcing providers, company A, company B, company C. These are the criteria. These are the weightage. How do you determine the weightage based on some analysis or discussion? For example, it can reduce operating cost. Weightage is uh, three. Okay, probably far greater. Eh? Greater is higher, uh, better. Uh, right. So this is, uh, can reduce capital investment. So what you do is you decide, decide the factors, okay? And you give some weights and you actually calculate the score, okay? The score for BIM, which is from the S, is 0.2 times three and so on. So you get 3.9. So this is probably the best uh, contractor that can actually, uh, you should outsource from, okay? Uh, potential IT outsourcing providers, okay, IT outsourcing providers, right? Um, probably I'll give you a small exercise for you to just, uh, you know, figure it out, okay, just one small exercise after the lecture. Right, I have five minutes, so this is the last, probably the last slide, and I want to show you one video about uh, Boeing so that you can have an idea of um, how aeroplanes are being made and you know in terms of the you know the strategies that you can think about okay how how they develop the strategies so global operation strategy options one is we call it international strategy whereby you import or export or license so this is it's called international strategy. You import, export, or license. License. You don't. You don't manufacture. Huh? Basically, for example, Halidi. Uh, you give license to other countries. Okay. You have the sole, sole agent to sell this. For example. Okay. That is actually low cost. Okay. Low cost. It's not very expensive to invest, and it is. Uh, but low responsiveness. Uh, responsiveness. Okay. So it's not really, uh, unless the brand name is there, the brand name is already there, then it shouldn't be a difficulty. Another way is to have a so-called global strategy, whereby you have standardized product, standardized product, you can you read this, eh? economies of scale, and you can provide cross-cultural learning. So 
is uh, it, it's also selling to uh, you know to other countries okay uh, but it is actually uh, having a higher cost compared to uh, compared to the international strategy so there's four okay there's four one is international strategy global strategy uh, the so called multi domestic strategy using existing domestic model so you can uh, copy that and 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 export that okay franchise through franchise through jvs subsidiaries like high rock cafe it is actually franchise to other countries okay so this is called multi domestic strategy and the final one is actually called transnational strategy because these different names are given by different researchers but the whole idea is uh, the uh, this is using existing domestic model this is uh, moving material people across national boundaries transnational strategy coca cola has a factory in uh, what do you call um, thailand but they source the material from all parts of the world in same that nestle nestle have many factories all over the world and they have many sources so the very complicated very complicated you know uh, operation uh, strategy that is uh, required for this transnational you know uh, companies transnational strategies but of course the beauty is you have cross cultural learning and you can you can develop new products new products new products okay uh, continuously ah this is ranking uh, corruption ranking eh? uh, malaysia nine eh? malaysia china mo achanya ari mah anyway this is uh, perception perception don't worry so let me just uh, share you with you a small uh, video, uh, video before we stop eh? okay just to me 